thanks so much for joining my money chat. This is my quick informal lesson on helping women figure out their finances. And in today's video, I want to, there's, I have compiled a list of 15 financial mistakes that most women make. And today I want to go into detail, a little more detail on financial mistakes, number one and three. Now I used to be a budget counselor and I went through my notes and I've gathered these mistakes from all of the notes of all the observations I had while I was a budget counselor and my own personal financial mistakes as well because I made so many. So let me start with financial mistake number one and just in case you've just your first informal with me, I have notes and I have water. I'm all about notes and water. So I'm going to take a look now to make sure I don't forget financial mistake number one. And financial mistake number one is thinking you're good with math so you're good with money. Well, I hate to tell you, I hate to break it to you, just because you can add two plus two does not mean you're good with money. Because if you're spending more than you earn, two plus two is equaling five in your world. And what do I mean by that? If you put it on the credit card and you do not pay your monthly bill on in full, or you do a buy now, pay later, or you have any payments at all, you're spending more than you earn. You're banking on future income to pay for purchases you made in the past. So being good with money, especially for the smallest purchases, especially for your credit cards, is saving the money ahead of time. You want a new pair of shoes and they're $60, then you save the $60, you take the cash to the store and you buy those shoes, or you put it on your credit card, but you put the $60 in an envelope so when the bill comes due, you have the money to pay for your bill. So again, just because you're good with math does not mean you're good with money. I encourage you to save the cash, set up a budget, some kind of spending plan, and make sure that you're on track with your money. That's financial mistake number one. Financial mistake number two is, do you use retail shopping as therapy. Now, I don't know about you, I back in the day when I used to love to shop, we had catalogs. Internet wasn't around then, believe it or not. It's hard to believe that you couldn't get packages in the mail every day or have them in two days because it would take 10 days or two weeks and who wanted to wait for that? But if you're having a fight, you're upset, you're angry, you're frustrated, whatever the case may be, hitting the internet, going to the mall is not going to cure what ails you. What's frustrating you is on the inside and the shopping is on the outside. Money's external. It's not going to fix what's on the inside of you. And if you don't get a handle on it, it's just going to continue, continue, continue. And when you use retail shopping as therapy, you have a tendency to overspend in areas and then that compromises your savings plan for your future. Maybe it compromises your rent. Maybe it compromises your utilities. As a result, your your months behind on your mortgage. I don't really know. But using shopping as retail therapy is a huge mistake. So what do you do about that when you're frustrated, angry, or upset? Well, I'm going to tell you to organize your pantry, clean your refrigerator, fold clothes, pound some clothes, go dig some, dig in the dirt, or go for a walk, a solitude walk, not a podcast, not on the phone. And whatever you do, don't get on the phone and vent because that doesn't help you or the person or the reason you're upset anyhow. Go for a solitary walk and think about why wow, you're so frustrated. I've been a blogger for almost four years now. I've been encouraging women to choose joy, to rise above their circumstances and live a life worthy of living. When you allow your circumstances to dictate to you how you are, as you know, as you know, it just creates angst and upsetness in you and then you're not able to live that joyful life that is just so, so much easier to live. All right, now, financial mistake number three. Let's move over here. Oh, this is a good one. You have no idea where the important documents are. Your husband or partner takes care of everything, the life insurance, the um, wills, the trust, the, 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 the passwords. The, let me ask you, do you know where the car title is? Do you even know how to pay a bill? Do you know where the will is? Do you know where your spouse or partner wants to get buried? All of those things, that's a huge mistake as women. Did you know there's billions of dollars of unclaimed life insurance out there? Don't be one of them. Know where the life insurance policy is. I suggest you get yourself a binder, you get all the hard copies of everything and you put it all in there. 
I update mine every single year. I get copies of my bank accounts. I make sure everything is totally up to date. I have a list of initial instructions, who to contact in case I pass away or both if both of us pass away. But it's also for my husband too because I do a lot of the, the money stuff. And that way if something happens to me, he knows where to go. You need to know where the important documents are. I was talking to three friends the other day. They're in their late 70s, 80s. And they have no idea where anything is. They don't know how to pay a bill. I'm like, to myself, I didn't say it out loud. What the heck? You're old. You really need to know because you're getting up there, girl. And women live older than men. And their honeys are going to die before they are. Chances are. And they're going to be totally clueless. Okay. There's your three financial mistakes. The first three financial mistakes that most women make is thinking, good with math, you're good with money. Retail shopping will cure what ails you and you don't know where the important documents are. I hope you like this video, or I hope you like this informal, I shouldn't have said video, I don't know why I said that. Anyhow, thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for Financial Mistakes 4 through 6, coming up.